In this lesson, we're going to wrap up our unit on gallbladder and biliary disease with cholangiocarcinoma and biliary cysts. Come join our biology class for another riveting adventure. Let's start with cholangiocarcinoma. Take a look at this cancer crab caught in the biliary looking seaweed. Cholangiocarcinoma is a rare type of cancer that is derived from the epithelial cells that line the bile ducts. These include both intrahepatic and extrahepatic ducts. That's the perihylar and distal bile ducts. The vast majority of these are extrahepatic. Unfortunately, these cancers carry a poor prognosis because they're often caught late. Known risk factors for cholangiocarcinoma include primary sclerosing cholangitis, represented by the biliary tree snake, cirrhosis, including from chronic hepatitis C, hence Sketchy's own Hep C hippotoy, and biliary cysts, which we'll get to in a moment. Speaking of chronic liver infections, another important risk factor is infection with the liver fluke. Hence, we've got a clone of orcas leaping through the water. Okay, a few highlights on the pathology. The vast majority of these cancers are adenocarcinomas, though about 10% are actually squamous cell carcinomas. And on a slide, most of these will be well differentiated with fairly normal ductal architecture and cells within a fibrous stroma. Most cells will be columnar appearing, since we're talking adenocarcinoma, though there can be some pleomorphism. Also, there may be some secondary changes, including areas of necrosis or sclerosis. So what does this look like clinically? Extrahepatic masses present with signs and symptoms of obstruction. Think jaundice and puritis, represented by our itchy billy goat. Hey, uh, can somebody get this kid a back scratcher? And remember, this is a conjugated hyperbilirubinemia we're talking about here. So we put a collar on little Billy, Sketchy's recurring symbol for conjugated bilirubin. Since we've got biliary obstruction, look for light-colored or acolic stools. Nope, those are not raindrops falling from the sky. And as you may have guessed in the setting of biliary obstruction, a dark-colored urine. Intrahepatic masses present differently. You're much less likely to see jaundice or classic signs of obstruction. Instead, patients may complain of dull right upper quadrant pain, or the doctor may incidentally detect an elevated ALKFOS on routine labs. Yep, no hepatobiliary scene is complete without Sketchy's own ALKFOS chalk and GGT gadget knife. Other red flags for cancer are unexpected weight loss, general malaise, and fever. And let the driver's firm papaya here remind you to look out for the palpable gallbladder, aka Carvassier's sign, which is a rare but classically taught indicator of cholangiocarcinoma. In reality, this test has pretty low yield, and you may be able to palpate a gallbladder in other non-malignant conditions. Cholangiocarcinomas are often diagnosed via magnetic resonance imaging or endoscopic studies while a physician may be looking for other causes of painless jaundice. And these objects floating nearby should remind you to think about the tumor markers like AFP, CA199, and CEA. If they're present, they can help support your diagnosis. But remember, these markers are not specific for cholangiocarcinoma and can be present in gastrointestinal and other tumors. Okay, a brief word on treatment, which we're going to represent by our class that's fixing up this coral beach. Unfortunately, once these cancers are diagnosed, many are too advanced and cannot be surgically resected. Distal masses are most amenable to surgery. Unfortunately, most are not resectable, and there is little evidence at this time for standardized systemic therapies. Palliative stenting can be used to relieve biliary obstructions, which can improve symptoms and quality of life. Next up, biliary cysts. So get ready for a real ball. Biliary cysts, formerly known as colidocal cysts, are cystic dilatations occurring along the biliary tree, including both inside and outside of the liver. These cysts are likely due to a combination of genetic and environmental causes, hence the environmental action sign here. In fact, most of these cysts are present at birth and may be associated with other congenital anomalies. Speaking of anomalies, check out this anomalous sketchy pancreas sponge. It's here to remind you that many biliary cysts are associated with abnormal anatomy, such as an abnormal junction of the pancreas and biliary system, and it's a reflux of those irritating pancreatic contents backing up into the biliary tree that likely causes epithelial injury, which, over time, leads to formation of cysts. Okay, seriously, what is that thing? Are you a little scared? Because I'm kind of scared. Sometimes these cysts can be acquired. For example, they can develop after a cholecystectomy. Hence the sliced open papaya. 
What will you see clinically? Typically, these cysts manifest in young children, usually those under 10. The classic triad consists of pain, jaundice, and a palpable mass, but usually you'll see two of the three. Nice! He dodged that ball. Remember, these cysts don't necessarily cause biliary obstruction, so liver function tests can be normal. One thing to know is that even though these cysts themselves are benign, they are associated with an increased risk of malignancy. So we just had to add one more sketchy cancer crab here. And because of this cancer risk, these cysts are best managed with surgical resection. And that does it for biliary tract diseases. Now get out there and soak up the sun like a creepy pancreatic sponge. Because we're moving on to the pancreas.